Hi everyone, this video is about memory cards for your brand new Nikon Z72 as here by my side and also applies for the new Nikon Z62. So let's have a look if you need these really really expensive CF Express card monsters or if SD cards are just fine. So have a look. <laughs> If you just wonder who I am, sorry for that. I just forgot to introduce myself in the beginning. My name is Matthias. I'm the editor-in-chief at ReadyTech, a German-based online network all about tech stuff, mainly focused on photography, gear stuff, accessories, so on, so on. So why does this video apply to both the Nikon Z72 and Z62? As most manufacturers, camera manufacturers do, Nikon also use the same technique or let's say the same chipsets in multiple cameras and obviously as the Z6 and Z7 second generation came out in the same moment, same time, so Nikon used a very similar tech inside besides the sensor obviously which is different but let's say the image processing and the memory card controllers are the same so therefore the speed the camera works or writes on the memory cards is the same but let's say the matter is a little bit more urgent with the Nikon Z72 due to the much larger files, so you need more speed. Keep that in mind. If you don't want to listen to my lovely voice anymore, nothing wrong with that. Check out the first link in the video description below. There you find our website dedicated to memory card speed in cameras. So there you find a just small table with all the memory cards we tested, both CF Express XQD and SD memory cards ranked by speed, actual write speed measured on the cameras, as I will do in a second. And you will also find a price performance recommendation updated every hour. Okay, so let's start the actual speed test with the Nikon Z72 and begin with the Kingston Canvas React Plus. Plus is very important because only the Plus variant is UHS2 capable. So far, the second fastest memory card we tested with the Nikon Z72. So, camera on the card. The camera is set up to a highest continuous shooting speed, but with mechanical shutter, so you can at least hear in a way how fast the camera performs with the memory card once the buffer is full. So, set up in NEF, so while shooting, it's compressed but lossless compressed so you can actually get a little bit higher in terms of file size but it's yeah already quite high. So what you can hear now is the speed in the image buffer so it's not limited by the memory card. This will kicks in in a few seconds yeah now. So now here we are limited by the SD card and we are about what is it roughly three images per second, two images per second, so something in this region and it takes a second and now it's finished so it's already saved all the images from the image buffer onto the SD card. So for me it's quite okay, let's say if you don't shoot 200 images in a row it's kind of okay, it's already really really fast. So. But let's change to a CF Express card and here the fastest one we tested so far coming from Angelbird from the AV Pro XT series. And on our website the tests are made completely uncompressed where you see a little bit more difference. But I thought for a video it's more of a practical experience. So started and you will probably hear that the camera just won't reach the end of the image buffer because the memory card is so fast you can do continuous shooting in the highest speed possible as long as the Nikon Z72 allows it. So it's much much faster but for me the question is is it really necessary just to give you quick impressions we are almost have yeah, 16, 17 images left in the image buffer and yeah now just the Z72 stops because I get the limit is 200 images in a row so it's just limited by the camera firmware. So does it make sense to switch from SD to a CF Express card? It really depends. So uh, let's start with the Nikon Z62 
which as already mentioned has smaller file size than the Nikon Z7 II we tested here in this video. So in my opinion it doesn't really make sense going to a CF Express card instead of an SD card with the Nikon Z6 series. Yeah, just because the file size is much smaller so you don't have an actual benefit. If you are looking for a more ruggedized card, I would go with the Sony TUF M series, not TUF G series, because the TUF M series is as tough as the TUF G series, not as fast, but also not as expensive, not even close. So that would be my best bet for a good and ruggedized card. If you don't want to invest too much money in a tough card, you can also go with the Kingston Canvas Black Plus we tested here. Pro grade card V90 series, uh, Delkin card we also tested, the Lexa 2000 uh, 2000X in the new V90 speed class variant. All those cards are totally fine, extremely fast and price performance is quite good at least in my opinion. But now to the Z7 II. With the Nikon Z7 II, as you've just heard, yes, there's an actual difference between CF Express cards on the one hand and SD cards on the other. So, but it can also make economically sense. Again, if you're looking for a more ruggedized card like the Sony TUF G series in this case, because again, much higher file size, the Alexa CF Express card is actually cheaper per gigabyte than the Sony TUF G series in many markets. So you get, let's say, 10 to 20 percent more performance for less money. And at least in my opinion, as I said, it's also very ruggedized because CF Express cards by itself are more robust in a way. You can see it's just a thicker design. So yeah, it definitely it can make sense. But again, not Everybody needs the fastest memory cards doing continuous shooting all the time. And here again, we have a lot of good alternatives, like the already mentioned Kingston Canvas React Plus, ProGrade cards, Delkin cards, whatever is cheap in your region, it will be a good fit. And if you're on a budget, what well, is totally fine, you can also get much cheaper cards with SD card format. My recommendation in the, let's say, mid fields are the Sony M series, not Tough M, just the Sony M series and the Pro Grade V60 aka Gold series. Both, let's say, 30 to 50 cents per gigabyte, but quite fast. And if you're really on a budget or just want to shoot one image here and there, the Kingston Canvas Select Plus, again, the plus is very important. It's a very good price performance SD card, roughly about 15, 20 cents per gigabyte. So really cheap and quite fast for that price point. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and if you, for whatever reason, the same as I am, interested in memory cards in cameras, so don't forget to subscribe. Or alternatively, or you can also do both, go to our website, it's linked below, it's memorycard.guru. I know a little bit uncommon domain, but it was free, so I've got it. And a last, let's say, announcement to our international viewership. Wenn ihr aus Deutschland kommt, haben wir natürlich eine deutschsprachige Webseite. Link auch unten in der Videobeschreibung. Neon Go Website or Goran Kudasai.